special chapel today. We have speaking from the Fallen Speaker Series. Uh, the Fallen Speaking ser Series is endowed by the Fallen family as part of the Fallen Chair. and allows us to have uh, funds to bring a lot of great people here to speak. And this one has a great historical connection to the school. And so I, I, I hope you really enjoy it. Thompson Webb III behind me is the great grandson of Webb's founder, William R. Sonny Webb. And he's the family historian. He's speaking today about his family's independent school legacy in a talk entitled Education, a Web Family Tradition. In addition to bell buckles, family members have found the schools in Knoxville, Claremont, California, and among many others. Dr. Webb is a retired professor of geological sciences at Brown University. He combined his undergraduate studies in botany with a PhD in atmospheric sciences to study the changing <coughs> climate since the last ice age. 21,000 years ago. So if you have questions about climate change, I want to talk to him. He lives on 45 acres in Seekonk, Massachusetts, where he and his wife, Joan, host farmers involved in a community-sponsored agriculture where he served as president of the Seekonk Land Conservation Trust. So I, please uh, be attentive, respectful, and let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Webb. <laughs> Well, it's a delight to be here today to address you. I have always loved the quote, I teach, I am in touch with the future. And I love thinking about old Sawney looking in this morning and smiling at this fulfillment of that statement. He taught and then created this school in which others could teach and through the efforts of himself and some of those others, including family members, here we all are in a setting where a love of learning and teaching continues. And you have become part of the future touched by Sawney. The human chain of learning continues. The trouble today for all of us is that he and his brother John did such a good job among family members in instilling a love of learning and teaching. Now we, ha we meaning you and me, face the challenge. And first, and, and teaching and you in, in keeping track of all the Webb family members who followed Sonny and his brother John Webb in becoming educators. Of John's four children, two were educators or married educators, and four in total became professors. For Sonny, four of his eight children became educators or married educators, and 17 family members were educators. That's a lot of people to name, but I, for one, am going to enjoy intoning their names here as part of the legacy that comes down in the family for their having Sonny and John started this school. In particular, for me, this is the school where my grandfather, Thompson Webb, the youngest of Sonny and Emma's eight children, was taught. He then founded his own Webb School in Claremont, California in 1922, and there is where my father was taught, Thompson Webb, Jr. My father was also taught prior to Webb in the little school that my grandmother, Vivian Webb, founded and ran for a few years. Dad, who's a, a university administrator, then became my non-classroom teacher of such activities as sailing, rowing a boat, paddling a boat, and he became also my mentor 
on how to become a father. My own teaching began when I served as a canoe counselor after graduating from high school. I was a canoe counselor at my Uncle Bill Webb's summer camp school. I then taught at both the University of Wisconsin when a graduate in graduate school before teaching for almost 40 years as a professor at Brown University, including summertime teaching of middle school students. Sonny himself used to tell the story of Little Brown Jug with his urging the listeners, pedigree, wow, you've got it. With the story in our family, I know it's a story here. In my case, I can already claim to be of good pedigree, given Sawney among my ancestors. And to note that he was of good ancestry with Richard Stanford as his grandfather, who was a school teacher in Orange County, North Carolina, before being elected to the US House of Representatives in the first Congress of our country in 1797. Next in line is, fa is Sawney's father, Alexander Smith Webb, a farmer who so valued education that he moved his large family to Oaks, North Carolina in the 1840s so that Sawney and his younger brother John and others in the family could go to the Bingham School which served as a model to Sawney in setting up his own school. Sawney's college education at the University of North Carolina was interrupted by his service in the Civil War. But while recovering from injuries in 1863, he excelled in an algebra class at the University of North Carolina, which five years later led to his being recommended for a teaching post at the Horner School, which initiated him into teaching. He used some of his earnings to sponsor the education of his younger brother, John, who was thoroughly trained in Latin and Greek at the University of North Carolina. And then soon after Sawney founded this school, he hired John to be his master teacher and co-principal. What that then sets up for me as a web with Alexander Smith Webb, the father, as the common ancestor for both Sawney and John, is to trace the Webb family's legacy and education in both the descendants of John Webb and those of Sawney Webb. And I'm going to start with John Webb's children and grandchildren first before moving to the educators among Sawney's descendants. John Webb and his wife, Lily Ship Webb, start off of good pedigree, not just because of Richard Stanford, but also because of Lily Ship Webb's father, Albert Micaiah Ship who graduated from the University of North Carolina in 1840 and became a Methodist minister and then president of Greensboro Female College from 1847 to 1849, where 13 years later, Sawney's sister Adeline and his future wife Emma Clary were educated. Then Albert moved on to being a professor of history and French at the University of North Carolina before he became the president of Wolford College. And then in the 1880s was chancellor at Vanderbilt. He stands out as a prominent educator in the latter half of the 18th, 19th century. John and Lily's older son, Albert, attended Webb School here but graduated from Phillips Academy Andover, just as Sawney's son, Will, had done, 
before doing his undergraduate and graduate work at Yale in French and then became an esteemed professor of Romance languages at Duke University. His son, John Maurice Webb II, earned a PhD in American history and rose through the ranks at the University of the South to serve as a much revered dean there. As if that were not enough, Mary Gillespie Webb, the oldest of John's and Lily's three daughters, became the wife of Stuart Mims, who had graduated from here and became a professor of history at Yale. And as if he weren't distinguished enough, his older brother, Edward Mims, was a professor and chair of English at Vanderbilt. And before that, taught my grandfather, Thompson Webb, at the University of North Carolina, where he supervised my grandfather's senior thesis on the influence of the French Revolution on Byron and Shelley. So that's something you guys can investigate sometime. Edwin is best known for teaching and inspiring important writers of the South, including Robert Penn Warren, and took the courageous public stand against lynching in the 1920s at a time of the revival of the Ku Klux Klan. He stood up for his beliefs just as Sawney had done. Like his brother, Stuart, Edwin went to and graduated from this school. The educational legacy among John's descendants, his son-in-law and the brother of his son-in-law, was therefore at the university level with professors at Duke, Yale, Vanderbilt, and the University of the South. When we move to Sonny's descendants, the first thing to honor is his providing a college education for all eight of his children, including all four daughters, who went to Randolph-Macon's Women's College in Lynchburg, Virginia, which today is co-ed and named Randolph College. In the late 19th century, women's education was not as highly valued as it is today. And he was ahead of his time in sending all of his daughters to college. His oldest daughter, Alla, then trained and became a librarian. And his two youngest daughters, Susan and Emma, both took classes after college at the Chicago Art Institute. Sawney supported their education beyond the undergraduate level. And Alla's becoming a librarian broadens the work qualifying as part of the educational legacy. She shows the love of books that was so central to Sawney and John, who in 1886 bought $8,000 worth of books out of the $12,000 that the citizens of Bell Buckle gave them to build this new school. They valued books over buildings. She was the first of four librarians in our family. What stands out most about Sawney's children and grandchildren is not just the devotion to the spirit of education as teachers, but also as leaders of schools. Some will taught here and then took over as co-principal in 1908 before becoming the sole principal in 1926. And he served as, as such until retiring in 1952. A former student once introduced him by saying, there is a spirit about the man. It's a greatness he inherited from his father and his uncle John. There's respect and there's a love but more than all these things, there's a sense of indebtedness we feel toward William Robert Webb Jr. as a teacher. My grandfather, Thompson Webb, 
caught the spirit while a student and later a teacher here and became the first of three of Sawney's descendants to found a new school when he started the Webb School of California in 1922. Bob Webb, Sawney's grandson, who graduated from this school and caught the spirit, founded the Webb School of Knoxville in 1954, 55. And my uncle Howell Webb, one of my father's brothers, who taught Latin here before World War II, caught the spirit and founded Foothill Country Day School in Claremont in 1954, which covers grades kindergarten to eighth in contrast to the high school grades at the other schools. Another of my uncles, my uncle Bill Webb, served as headmaster at both the Catalina School and at the Dunn School in California. My father, who taught at Andover and the Catalina School before serving in the Navy during World War II, opted out of becoming a headmaster, but ended up a university administrator by becoming the director of the University of Wisconsin Press. By publishing books, he joins ALA and the other librarians in making books available for teaching. Others in the family who caught the spirit pursued careers in teaching and research. For example, Sawney's grandson, Edward Price Jr., earned a PhD at the University of California and became a professor of ge geography. He is the son of Susan Webb Price and Edward Price, who graduated from this school and then after teaching here, Ed Price, having caught the spirit, founded the Price Webb School in 1912 in Lewisburg, Tennessee, with Sawney as his advisor. His school unfortunately burned down in 1923. That led him to move his family out to Claremont, California, where he became the John Webb of my grandfather's school with his expertise in Latin. His grandson and Sawney's great-grandson, Larry Price, son of the geography press, uh, professor Ed Price Jr., got his PhD in physics and will be giving you a fallen lecture later this year on his research at the Large Hadron Collider, um, the world's largest particle accelerator in Geneva, Switzerland. Another of Sawney's great-grandsons, McDougald Owen teaches philosophy at Fort Lewis College in Durango, California, uh, Colorado. And if you're looking for good colleges, you might think of that place, at least why you'd get some good skiing in. And uh, he's an ardent birder and taught me how to identify some new birds when he visited me this spring in Massachusetts. He is a grandson of Sawney and Emma's youngest daughter, Emma Webb McLean, whose husband, McDougal McLean, a Rhodes Scholar, was a Webb grad and a doctor who studied tuberculosis and wrote a book on the topic. Yet another great grandson, David Webb, the son of Sawney and Emma's son, John Stanford Webb, went to Webb in California and there was inspired to study fossils by Ray Alf, a biology teacher whom my grandfather hired. David earned a PhD in vertebrate paleontology and then was a professor at the University of Florida and a curator at the Florida State Museum where his cheerful, enthusiastic teaching inspired many students. Like Larry, Dougald, and David, I too am a great-grandson of Sonny and Emma, who, as you might imagine, grew up with wonderful encouragement in the family for my intellectual interests. I was lucky enough to be sponsored by my grandparents of the Webb School of California to spend five weeks as a rising ninth grader on a fossil hunting trip 
led by Ray Alf, the same biology teacher who had inspired my second cousin, David. And uh, this experience started me on my geological career of studying past climates and climate change. You might imagine what a thrill it was as a boy to find bones, teeth, and skulls of animals that lived 30, 40 million years ago in rock formations of Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota. In college, I had a mentor who was a botanist, and I shifted my interest from vertebrates to studying plants and then got my PhD in atmospheric sciences where I used fossil plant evidence of changing vegetation to infer past changes in climate. My studies join with those of many other paleoclimatologists in showing how unprecedented and unusual the present rate of climate change is. Currently, my former students and their students, my scholarly descendants, are continuing to address the issue of climate change. And they have become an additional part of the educational legacy of the Webb family. Before closing, I want to pick up on the bibliophilic or love of book side of the legacy by noting three other family members who have followed Alla's lead in becoming librarians. The first is Betty Docker Webb, my uncle Howell's wife, who managed and built up the library at Foothill Country Day School and for whom the library there is named. The second is my uncle Jack, the youngest of my father's three brothers, who was a librarian at Claremont High School. And the third, I gotta bring her in, is my daughter. Sarah, who studied for her PhD in library science at Syracuse and did her work in studying the public libraries in Namibia and how they are supporting education of students there and contributing to that country's developing democracy. The educational legacy of Sawney and Emma's branch of the family therefore shows up in the careers of 17 family members. They include four librarians, five school founders who join two others in serving as principals and headmasters, making seven, and one university administrator, four college professors, of whom I'm one, and one physics researcher. That's a great legacy. So to sum up how I fit into this tree, I am the oldest son of the oldest son of the youngest son and child of Sonny Webb, who himself was the ninth child of Alexander Smith Webb, and who with Alexander's 11th child, John Webb, made such a success of this school. I am proud to be part of their educational legacy. Thank you very much. From this web school to you. All right. It, it's a, it was made out of a plant from here, so you'll enjoy it. Okay, cool. Thank you. That was a fantastic talk, by the way. Your family has such a rich educational history, and, and you really brought it forward. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you again.